Hello everyone, welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you a court decision on Obamacare, election news, news of a Caltrans survey group you can sign up for, a street repair list for Ridgecrest, news of discounted adoption rates at the Ridgecrest Animal Shelter, today's gas prices, weather sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitnick. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. Well, yesterday a federal court made a ruling on a provision of Obamacare. A federal judge Thursday ruled the Obama administration has been improperly funding an Obamacare subsidy program. This is a major victory in a lawsuit filed by Republicans in the House against the White House. Judge Rosemary Collier ruled the administration doesn't have the power to spend money on cost share reduction payments to insurers without an appropriation from Congress. Collier stayed her ruling so the administration can appeal the decision. According to The Hill, billions of dollars in cost sharing reduction payments under Obamacare are at issue. The subsidies are paid to insurance companies so they can reduce out of pocket costs such as deductibles for low-income people on Obamacare plans. The House GOP argued the administration was unconstitutionally spending money without an appropriation from Congress. The administration countered it didn't need an appropriation from Congress because the funds were already permanently appropriated by the Affordable Care Act's tax credit section. The judge disagreed. She said, such an appropriation cannot be inferred. The judge ruled, None of the arguments, whether based on economics, unintended results, or legislative history, is persuasive. The court will enter judgment in favor of the House of Representatives and enjoin the use of unappropriated monies to fund re reimbursements due to the insurers under Section 1402. So the Republicans in the House stopped a major violation by the White House. Of course, now we have to wait to see if the White House appeals the decision, which they probably will. In election news, we are starting to see new polls showing a shift in how people are viewing Trump and Clinton. There are now three polls showing Trump and Clinton in statistical ties. This probably relates to the settling down to one candidate for the Republicans, and the disapproval rating of the current administration are also possibly affecting Clinton's numbers. She is tying herself to the Obama administration 100%. And this is at a time when the polls show Obama's disapproval rating at 50 and even 51%. And there is another poll that shows 68% of the country think the country is headed in the wrong direction. So why would Clinton tie herself to such a dismal position is problematic for her. And yesterday, Trump met with House Speaker Paul Ryan for about 45 minutes. Also at the meeting was RNC Chief Rebus. Trump also was meeting with other Republican leaders, trying to bring the party together. After the meeting, Ryan said it was a very pleasant meeting and that he thinks it went very well. Trump also said the meeting went well. All signs point to a slow coming together of the party, except by the Romney followers. Romney is still trying to slam Trump, criticizing him to release his tax returns now. This is from a man that didn't release his tax returns until September when he ran for president. Romney represents the elite power structure that just can't come to grips that the people have spoken and they need to get over themselves. It is not about them anymore. And then we get a report that the Washington Times has assigned 20 reporters to investigate Trump, find everything they can about him. I'm kind of surprised they haven't already done that, but there should be a full vending of all the candidates. I wonder how many investigators they have assigned to get details about Clinton. Given the post strong lean to the left, I would bet they have a minimal crew assigned to her investigation. And we'll soft cover, if at all, anything negative about her. Well, you can bet they'll give front page slams on anything negative they find about Trump. So get ready for a heavy liberal media run campaign labeled as news. And in local news, yesterday I got a call from a lady that watches this newscast regularly. Her name was Kathy from Inyokern. She called to thank me for speaking out about the closure of the Ridgecrest Jail. And she too wonders why we aren't seeing any news on our Supervisor Gleason or our mayor and city council appear to be doing nothing to stop the closure of the jail. And another thing she told me about was the closure of the Antelope Valley Cancer Treatment Center here. This is a real blow and a hardship for all their patients here and those that come here from as far north as Mammoth. She said that for these patients to now travel to Lancaster 
for chemotherapy is a terrible burden. She is asking for us to help get the word out about this problem. And if anyone wants to try and get together to fight this closure, to give us a call here at the station and we'll get you to Kathy. And this too would be a good use of time by our mayor and council to possibly get involved and investigate what the problem is. Kathy says that she hears it is some government political problem driving the closure, not the lack of patience. So again, if you have any concerns, contact us here at KZGN TV. You can contact us via email at info at KZGN.net. Thanks for calling, Kathy. In state news from Caltrans, we get this story of road repairs on Route 395. The California Department of Transportation will begin the Johannesburg resurfacing project on Tuesday, May 17th. The location of the work is on U.S. Highway 395 in Kern County. The work goes from the Kern County San Bernardino County line to the junction of State Route 178. This project will resurface the roadbed with a rubberized hot mix asphalt. Drivers should anticipate daily lane closures along this stretch of Kern County, U.S. Highway 395, Monday through Thursday from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. Delays could be up to 20 minutes. This project is scheduled to be completed by September. The contractor for this $5 million project is Granite Construction from Bakersfield. For the latest on highway information, please visit Caltrans' quick map site or call our road condition hotline at 1-800-427-ROAD. Caltrans wants to remind everyone of the new law that is intended to protect road workers. For the safety of workers and other motorists, please be work zone alert and move over where possible. Again, this repair is on South 395 from Johannesburg starting Tuesday, May 17th. Now stay with us after the break. We'll have more Caltrans news. Thanks for staying with us. In other Caltrans news, we get this report from them. Caltrans is actively seeking 5,000 volunteers to take part in a free study that could shape the way drivers are charged for road usage. Called for by the legislature in 2014, the Road Charge Pilot Program will produce information for further study on the concept of a road charge program. State officials aim to recruit a large number of volunteers reflective of the vast geographic and socioeconomic diversity of the state. Volunteers from rural areas are being sought to balance out volunteers from urban areas. The pilot program is exploring an alternative to the current gas tax. In this pilot, drivers will record and report the miles they drive, either manually or automatically, to see whether a mileage-based system is a viable solution to the gas tax. As we use less fossil fuels to cover more ground, the gas tax can't keep up with California's transportation system, and is now experiencing a funding shortfall which totals $5.7 billion a year. That is why Senate Bill 1077 created the California Road Charge Technical Advisory Committee and why that committee spent the last year holding public meetings around the state and gathering input from a broad range of stakeholders. The result is the tax recommendations report for the pilot which describes the program. The program costs drivers nothing to participate, offers drivers a choice in mileage recording methods, protects drivers' privacy and personal information, determines the impacts of a road charge on various income levels, determines the impacts of a road charge on urban and rural drivers, seeks participation from at least 5,000 vehicles that represent the geographic, demographic, and socioeconomic diversity of our state. The pilot will go live in July 2016 for a nine-month duration and be no cost to the participant. At the conclusion of the pilot, The California State Transportation Agency will issue a report with its findings to the legislature, the Road Charge Technical Advisory Committee, and the California Transportation Commission. Following receipt of that report, the Commission will make its recommendations regarding the pilot program to the legislature, which will consider whether to proceed with implementing a road charge system in California. In simple language, since there are more and more vehicles using the roads that do not buy gas, the legislature is trying to find a way to raise funds for necessary maintenance, traditionally paid by gas taxes. It is a problem. Those vehicles use and damage the roads just as much as any other vehicles, but they aren't paying into the gas tax fund for maintenance of the roads. More information about the California Road Charge Pilot Program and participant volunteer information is available at www.californiaroadcharge.com. 
pilot.com. I signed up for it. It was very easy. Just go to the website, click on the sign up button, answer a couple easy questions, and then you'll get a notice if you've been accepted as a participant. I feel that if we have a chance to participate, this is a good thing. Again, this is a program where Caltrans is reaching out to the rural areas to get our inputs. So, try it. Sign up now before all the positions are taken. And speaking of road maintenance, in City News, the Ridgecrest Public Works Street Maintenance Division is announcing that road work will be taking place in numerous areas throughout the city of Ridgecrest this month through May 19th. The Maintenance Division, along with the contractor, will be reconditioning the following roads next week. Inyo Street from Hermosa to Ward, Mamie Avenue from Randall to Sherry, Benson Avenue from Gemstone to Silver Ridge, Hayden Avenue from Gemstone to Silver Ridge, and finally, Gemstone Street from Hayden to Benson. The roadways will be open during the resurfacing period. However, there may be some side street closures to the main streets. The streets department is asking that the community use alternate routes during the hours of 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday. The Public Works Department and the City of Ridgecrest thank you in advance for your cooperation and understands that this could be an inconvenience during the resurfacing of the roadway. These roadways are being funded by Measure L tax dollars and tax allocation bonds. Now on local club news. The Rotary Club has announced their distribution of scholarships. Last Wednesday, the club handed out this year's scholarships. Winners this year include David Aranda, Madison Schiller, Kevin Seaman, Michaela Castro, Sidney Seiler, Irene Anen, Mallory McDaniel, Taylor Corzine, Andrew Christensen, Nicholas Doug, and Annalyn Edelag, all from Burroughs High School. Also getting scholarships were Erica Santero, Zoe Key, and Larissa Brown from Mesquite High School. And Roxana Horta got a scholarship from Trona High School. That adds up to 16 $1,000 scholarships. This was a tremendous program by the Rotary Club. If anyone is interested in joining the Rotary Club, just come to one of our lunch meetings Wednesdays at noon at the Clarion Inn on North China Lake Boulevard. Everyone is welcome to join. And in happy news from the Ridgecrest Animal Shelter, we get this report. Are you looking for a new family member, dog or cat? The Ridgecrest Animal Shelter is a great place to go to find that special addition to your family. They keep these animals almost indefinitely until they get adopted out. This month, they are having a special in adoption costs. The special adoption rates for all dogs is only $45. All cats are free right now. With the adoption, you also get a free spay or neuter voucher and microchipping. When you get your new pet neutered or spayed, all you will have to pay for this service is a $20 copay, which is a huge savings for the owner. The shelter hours are Thursday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, they have all sorts of wonderful dogs and cats out there just waiting for you to come out and meet. And as always, if anyone has anything they can donate to the shelter to help pay for keeping these pets available for adoption, you can help. They always need blankets and towels for the pens. They take donations of dog and cat food and any other supplies. And of course, cat donations can be made as well. This is a shelter that goes to the greatest lengths to save and place dogs and cats. You can help. For more information, contact the Ridgecrest Animal Shelter. Oh, and they have a Facebook page as well. Just search Ridgecrest Animal Shelter. And hats off to the great shelter staff. You folks are awesome. All the way from the shelter officers, staff, and pack volunteers that help take care of the shelter. And if you'd like to be a volunteer worker, contact the shelter for an application and details. You can volunteer as much or as little as you want, anytime you want. Without the volunteers, we wouldn't have the shelter we have today, said Mary Stage, shelter supervisor. Now in case you continue this effort to provide information and news you've asked for, here are today's gas prices for Ridgecrest and some surrounding areas. Well, since my last report, local prices have held steady. And the good news is we are still the lowest prices in all the areas we are monitoring. As of this morning, risk prices range from 237 to 289. Lancaster from 259 to 299. The LA Valley area from 259 to 279. And the Bishop area 274 to 299. We have four stations at 237 per gallon. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Now stay with us. After the break, we'll have weather and sports.
Thanks for staying with us. Now here's Lane with the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, strong to severe storms capable of producing large hail and damaging wind gusts are forecast from eastern Kansas into the middle Mississippi Valley this afternoon. Additionally, a few strong to severe storms will be possible across southeast Virginia and eastern North Carolina into this afternoon. Temperatures across the nation. Carolina's at 73, Georgia at 77, Arkansas at 79, Northern Texas at 81, New Mexico at 75, and Los Angeles at 63. And for us locally, tonight, mostly clear with a low around 59, south-southwest wind, 10 to 20 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Saturday, sunny with a high near 90, south-southwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 57, west-southwest wind, 10 to 20 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 30. Sunday, sunny with a high near 86, southwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, mostly clear with a low around 56, west-northwest wind, 5 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Monday, sunny with a high near 85, west wind, 5 miles per hour. Monday night, mostly clear with a low around 56, northwest wind, 10 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 15. And Tuesday, sunny with a high near 87, north-northeast wind, 10 miles per hour. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom. Thanks, Lane. And now here's Tom Heck with sports. A very pleasant Friday early evening to everyone. Let's talk about the NBA. San Antonio is out. They were defeated last night by Oklahoma City in Oklahoma City. In fact, it really wasn't that close until the end. The Spurs made a nice run late in the game, but still fell short. So Oklahoma City will advance. It will take on Golden State for the Western Conference Finals. Should be an interesting series. We'll see how it plays. Golden State will have home court advantage. In the regular season, Golden State won all three of those games. All right, let's talk about tonight. Miami and uh, Toronto, game number six. That's at Miami. Toronto leads that 3-2. to two. A win tonight could give the Raptors their first chance at a divisional final in the history of the franchise. Should be an interesting game. Miami, not so healthy. They've had a few injuries during the, the playoffs. Toronto the same way. At this time of the year, though, everyone just has to play hurt, it seems like. Every team has uh, injuries. Golden State overcame theirs. We'll see what Toronto can do tonight along with Miami. If Miami can win tonight, Game 7 on Sunday in Toronto. That'll be a 12:30 game on ABC. All right, Tim Duncan may or may not have played his last game last night for the Spurs, and what a just a class guy, one of the best players to ever play in the game, and for the best franchise, I think, in the history of sports, period. Greg Popovich and Tim Duncan have been around. They've won over 1,000 games together. They've won 157 playoff games together and four NBA titles. That just can't be matched by anyone anywhere. All right, Major League Baseball. The Red Sox are just scoring runs like crazy. They score 11 more last night. They won 11 to 1 against the Houston Astros. That is five games in a row. They have scored at least 11 runs in a game. They're on a winning streak. The Dodgers win again last night. Clayton Kershaw another shutout, 5 nothing against the Mets. The Dodgers split the four games with New York. Angels get swept by the Cardinals 12 to 10. The Cardinals had 18 hits. The Angels had 15. Angels on the road tonight, Friday night in Seattle. They'll play three there. Then they'll go to L.A. and play two, the Dodgers, in that uh, freeway rivalry. Then they'll come home next weekend and play the Orioles. So the Angels with a tough uh, road ahead right now. The Angels currently eight games under 500. All right, the Phillies won again. They beat Atlanta. Arizona does the same. Uh, to San Francisco, and San Diego defeats Milwaukee. All right, NBA coaching note, Scott Skiles, after one season with Orlando, has called it quits. He just doesn't think that he's the right guy for that situation. Skiles actually played on the first team ever in 1989 when Orlando became an NBA franchise. In the NFL and the NHL last night, the Sharks, Game 7, all over the Predators, 5 nothing in San Jose. The Sharks will compete for the Western Conference Championship. All right, the L.A. Sports Arena, an icon, will be 
torn down. They had its last event several days ago. After 56 years, the sports arena will give way for a new soccer complex in the L.A. Sports Arena, the original home of the L.A. Lakers. It was the home of a lot of L.A. minor league hockey teams before they got the Kings, and it was also the home for many years to USC basketball. Had Barnum and Bailey Circus there traditionally in the summer. Boy, if, uh, if the walls could talk there, they would have quite some stories. Also home to UCLA basketball when Polly was getting renovated several years ago. That's your sports for this Friday. I'm Tom Heck. Have a good weekend for KCGN. So that's the news for today. Also, KCGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KCGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for Ridgecrest Talk, coming up next.